Hi, Michael Bettine here for another episode of It's Cup of Time. And today I want to talk about something that I get a lot of questions on, and that's my gong racks. How do I put them together? How do I build different things? Because if people know about me, they know that I have a lot of different racks. And for the most part, I use Gibraltar rack tubing and rack parts. I've been using Gibraltar stuff for about 30 years now, starting in the early 90s with my drums, putting my drum set and cymbals and all percussion on a rack. And then in 2000, when I started expanding more into gongs and other percussion, it was very natural to use the same sort of thing, the Gibraltar racking. So I'm probably the first gong player to extensively use Gibraltar racking and parts to build a setup. I mean, back in 2000, Gibraltar didn't even have a gong rack. They had some basic drum setups and they had some percussion setups with uh, trap tables and that you could hang cowbells and wood blocks and things on. They had nothing for gongs, so it was really kind of exciting. I mean, it just I bought all kinds of racks and started putting them together and creating what I needed. And what I like about the Gibraltar stuff is as my setup grew, I could add more parts to it and create a bigger setup. So it's very flexible. Even today, if I only need to use like the center section here, I can leave this part off, I can leave the other part off, just use the center section. If I only need to use two gongs, I can take this apart and put a leg here and there we go. I can just have a double gong stand like we are going to build today. So Gibraltar stuff is great. Uh, right now some of it is difficult to get, as many things are. Many of the parts are back ordered, but what I do, I, I haunt the music stores for used drum racks. And I recently bought, here's part of my, my booty here. I bought two three-sided drum racks. And this is just, again, part of the tubes that I got with all these racks. I have a whole stack of more tubes over there. But I want to show you how to build a basic two-tier gong rack and then how to modify it for your needs. Putting on wings like over here or expanding it so it can be a four gong rack and all those things. So first let's start with the basics. The feet. The feet come in in various types and sizes. Here we have a 24 inch and I believe this is an 18 inch. And you also can have a smaller 12 inch one. Now, if I'm just building a double stand and I'm gonna have large gongs on it, I want larger feet, just to give me a wider berth, you know, to keep things from tipping over. Especially if I'm gonna have a big gong on top, if you get that moving somewhat, there can be a tendency to tip. So I might wanna go with a larger foot like a 24 inch but in many cases an 18 inch is fine and if you notice there's two different clamps here on the left here is what they call the road series which is their super heavy duty series and on my right is the regular one now the Road Series is really made you know, for like heavy metal drummers and drummers who are you know, playing a 50 date tour and they pack it up every night and things like that. It, it's really heavy duty. It's also heavy. So I generally only use the Road Series stuff here you know, where it's going to sit. I don't have to carry it around. I prefer just the regular type T connector instead of the Road Series one. 
But when you buy stuff used, hey, sometimes you end up with the Road Series uh, parts, so you, you can go with it. So it works fine. So you have to determine, you know, if you've got different types of feed is which one you want to use. So we're going to use the smaller ones right now just because it's easier. So I have two of them here. I'll just lay them out. Next, we have to determine how tall do we want the stand. Bars come in different lengths. They generally come in, uh, I believe it's a 28, uh, 36, and 43 inch lengths are the main ones. You can get 24 inch tubes. You can get, I think it's a 56 inch, a really tall tube. So generally when I'm looking to put together a double stand, I will use the longer tubes on the bottom, just like I have here. These are 43 inch tubes. So we can take something like that. And then if we stack, here's a 28 inch. So if we put this on a foot and stack it, okay, you can see how tall that's going to be. It's going to be taller than me. That will be fine. Or in some cases, we might want to use, let's see, I don't have a separate one, but here we go, two 36s. So here's one. And if we stack another 36 on top, there we go. So a lot has to do with what you have available and how you want to build something. And also how you want to transport it. Obviously shorter ones are easier to transport. Okay, so let's look at this. So we're gonna take a 36 inch tube with a regular T clamp. So this is just right on top of here. This is gonna be our bottom crossbar. So I put it on here. I'll put it in the, the feet. Tighten it up and there we go. There's our first leg. And probably be best if I lay it down so it doesn't Fall. And let's get another part here. Here's a, here's a matching one. We'll put it over on this side. So here's two feet and two tubes, basically the legs. Let me lean that here. Next thing we have to determine is how wide do we want to make the stand? Again, we could make it 28 inches wide. 36 inches wide, 43 inches wide. We have different size bars. So I'm going to use a 36. And I have one here that I already have some hooks on. This is the type of hook that I came up with back in around 2000 because again, Gibraltar didn't have any gong stand at that time. So they didn't have a gong hook. And this is using their memory clamp with an S hook from the hardware store. I have an article on my website that I will link down below that tells you how to make these. But that's what I started using. And what I like about this is it's a metal clamp and you can see the hook doesn't hang very far down. The tube they do, or the clamp they make now is plastic and it hangs down about this far. So you get all this wasted space. And the other thing is plastic clamps and fittings, don't use them. There are a lot of racks out there that are made for like electronic drum pads, which don't weigh much, and they use plastic clamps and fittings. But you wanna avoid those because they do have the possibility of cracking or breaking. The only place I would use plastic fittings is maybe here in my studio on a stand that stays, never gets disassembled, and is always just right here. So there's no stress on it. But otherwise, I don't trust the, the, the plastic clamps at all. So these are metal, and we'll take our legs. 
There we go. Tighten one in there. Put it on the other. Tighten that up. And there we have our base, which is a single gong stand. So if you want to sit, this is perfect. This is all you need. And let's hang a gong on there. So there we go. Single gong stand. I've got the feet, 36 inch bar for an upright and a 36 inch bar to go across. And this is a 28 inch gong. And it's perfect. It's very stable. This thing is not going to tip. It's not going to move anywhere. So we want to add a second gong. What do we do? The next thing we need are these extender clamps. This allows you to put two pipes that are going in the same direction together. So we'll put them over here. We'll put one here. Tighten it down. Put a second one over here. Tighten it down. And then we will take another 36 inch. This already has a T-clamp on it on the top. Put it up here. And then we have another one. And here's another crossbar, 36 inch crossbar with clamps. So what you need to do, put this in first, then put this on here and put it in the base and tighten everything up. Get the base tightened. And make sure these are tight. Okay, stable, sturdy. Let's hang another gong on here. So there we go. A double 28 inch gong stand. It's sturdy. It's not going to tip over even if I get the, the gongs rocking here. And what I like about it, besides being sturdy, it's compact. If I take it apart, it fits neatly into a bag or a case. It's easy to assemble. It gets put together exactly the same way every time. Okay, from here, let's say you want to expand it and make something to hold four gongs, like my big rack behind me. Well, all you need to do, you need two more of these extender clamps and two more bars. They don't have to be the same length. You could have 43s and 36. You could have 28 and 36 or whatever. On the one back here, I have two 36s going across. So all you need to do is take the end off here, put one of those extenders on each end here, put another bar in there on the top and the bottom, then put it into your upright here and you end up with what I have back here and you can see I've got clamp extender clamp and an extender clamp down here putting it together so that gives me a four gong rack now especially with a four gong rack I'd really want to go with the longer feet like these like the 24 inch because you've got a lot of weight and motion there and this will just give you a little more security. So what if you want to take something like this or the bigger one and add a wing off of it? That's pretty easy to do. I have one here. 
And this has a completely different kind of clamp. This is designed, this is a stackable clamp. It's designed that you can stack it on another one of the same clamp, like this. So you have one coming in this way, off of here, and then this one will come in that way, and they can stack. But you can also do it with the standard T-clamps. So let's take this gong off for a moment. And in order to stack it, we're going to have to lower this a little bit. Now this one, I need a drum key. And we're going to lower it enough to put the wing on. That should do even here. Usually I'll use like a level or I will measure just to make sure everything is even. I'm just going to do this by eye right now. down. There we go. Okay, so now we have a little bit of space here. Get my key. I can take this wing and just put this over here. Loosen that a bit. Now you could use two T's and lower this even further or put a T under it, depending on how you want to do it. Either way works. I like to use this because then I don't have such a big gap. You know, one bar way down and then this one's going to be up higher even still. So let me move this over a little. All right, so you could run your T out to the side like this and have your gong hanging on it. Or you might want to have it come in some. And I would lock this down, tighten it down. And you could do this on both sides have two extensions so you can run multiple gongs on there. We'll put this one back in the middle. And we'll put this one up here. Okay, and we can run and have it at an angle. So we can easily run two T's. You could run other things off of here, bells and other instruments if you want, instead of a gong. If you want, you could repeat the process down here, run another bar and run another gong. Now, the only thing with this type of setup, if I'm having the wings coming forward suddenly we've got this weight that's that could pull the stand forward so i'll show you what i would tend to do loosen this up a little and what i'm going to do is move the clamp back like this more so that there's more of the foot in front of me. And that will 
help keep things from tipping over. So that's what I do on the current setup I'm using, which is four gongs in the middle, a wing with a gong here, a wing with another gong down here, and then I have some wings over here with bells and other percussion on that. So I have the feet with the clamp further back. So again, the pull, there's more leg here. It's not going to tip over. Now, another thing you can do on my bigger set here is I actually have a complete side, as you can see right here. So I have the whole thing repeating and coming here. I have another leg and another foot. If you've got feet, too many tubes here. If you have feet coming off here, a full leg with a foot, you don't need as long a foot like this because the outer ones are going to take that forward motion where it wants to tip. The outer legs are going to stabilize everything. So, so much depends on how your setup is. And that's it. And you, you could just build whatever you need. I probably have at least 10 different racks for different things. I have my main rack here in my studio. I have a second one, which is almost a complete copy, except I don't have the outer legs that I use for gigs. I have this new double one that I put together to use here. I have one with four tiers that has two octaves of tune gongs on and then a couple of bass gongs. I use a rack for my Kulintang gongs, a rack for my big bass drum that I use as a sound table. I have a rack for, I don't know, a couple of other things that I have, but I have a lot of Gibraltar racking because it's so versatile and usable. So that's it. Just to recap, I mean, you can buy parts on eBay. You can get stuff at music stores. Like I just picked up stuff yesterday at Music Go Round and a rack like two weeks ago at Music Go Round. So music stores and eBay are a good source of parts and complete setups. You have to know what you're looking for. So I would advise, you know, look at some racks, look at um, like Gongs Unlimited's website to see how they put the racks together. And you can build the official Gongtopia rack, which is very much like this with two wings on it. I'll put a link to that down below. The other thing is you'll go on the Gibraltar site. I will put a link down below. Become familiar with what all the parts are and how they go together. So when you come across a bunch of parts, you know what you have and you know what you need to complete some sort of a gong stand. Okay, I hope this uh, little tutorial on gong stands has been helpful. I do get a lot of questions about building stands and that. So if you do have any other questions, uh, leave it in the comments below or message me on Facebook, send me an email, whatever. I'm always glad to answer things and help out. So have a great week and go practice. We'll see you later.